What's up, everybody? I am here at the Black Window Cream office with my boy Mike O'Brien and Kavika Bonis. Uh, both these guys just finished up a new music video that just dropped for Cal. It is called My Brother. My brother told me that we'll never be as young as we are right now. And, and this thing is crazy. You guys did a great job, by the way. Thank you. Thanks. Um, we're going to do an in the field episode with these guys and break down, you know, pre production production and post-production in a two-part series so this is part one of that series so let's get right into it we're starting in pre-production right so for you you directed this video you did the vfx what what kind of went into the idea of your pre-production you met with the artists and you started talking about it, or how the concept come to be myself cal luke we all sat down at cal's place we kind of had an idea of we wanted to go through this timeline the whole timeline aspect from point a to point b was really the backbone hmm. of what we wanted to go and accomplish so did you take that to, you started creating a treatment to outline this? Well, the treatment was, it kind of came after we all spoke mm. when I put the treatment actually together, detailed, but uh, we just generalized the whole thing at Cal's place. So when it came to the concept, like how involved was Cal when it came to preparing the, the visual idea? Cal was very involved. He brought the old school videos to the table, you know, of him from way back. So we're like, how do we incorporate that? and? not make it corny but you know make it cool sort of thing um and then it was like all right let's put what luke said together what cal said together and my point a to point b thing and it just became like let's have these hanging frames just kind of lead him to his present moment so you mentioned uh, having the hanging frames that we see throughout the entire video uh which clearly involved vfx and at what point did you decide to bring kavika into the picture we were thinking how do we create a practical approach but also incorporate VFX because that makes your job a hell of a lot right. easier when it's a little <laughs> bit of practical. Um, and it was, I actually hit you up. I was like, do you have any oh, VFX yeah. artists uh, in mind? And you recommended Kavika, hit him up. And he's like, hell yeah, let's do it. So the picture frames are hanging by fishing line. The frames that we had on either side, the three and three, those were relatively light, um, but they had fallen and that fishing wire snapped. That would have been devastating. Would you were renting these or what? We actually got hooked up. Um, Framebridge, shout out to Framebridge. Uh, hundreds of dollars worth of frames. Even the main frame that you guys used, Cal used it in his album artwork. It's like used in this video. It's the main piece in this video. You said that, how much was that? It was $15 on a Facebook Marketplace. So shout out to Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> For real. Damn. But yeah, we just wanted a golden frame, sort of something different. But what's cool is that because of the frame being evolved, his album and his rollout, it was from that. Right. So they didn't have the idea of the frames before. So it was all based off of the video, which is awesome. You know, you had the initial idea for um, the TVs to have the VFX and you got Kavika involved, but it right. seemed to have a lot more VFX that got baked into it throughout the, the piece. <laughs> yeah, did yeah. that come later? Bad, or did you know that you were going to have that be that heavy? To be honest, I, I didn't. Like, I'm very ambitious with my ideas. I kind of think that it could always get done one way or another. Right. Um, but I had a lot of faith in Kavika and he, he rolled with the punches. And like, he just, he was super on point with getting everything. Yeah, what was interesting is that the original treatment, I guess, just required the frames to be hanging there. But over time, it kind of evolved where I did my things and he's, he, I guess he got more ideas and he started adding on top of it. So it wasn't like, my frames were the sole VFX effect in that entire video. Like the whole idea was, it was a collaborative effort between everybody, the DP, the VFX, everybody lighting involved. And I just let him roll with it. I, I was just like, put something in the frame. And that's what he came right. up with. Did but, you have to shoot differently a court, like for VFX? Was there something that you had to do specific so that it would work more for you? Is that why uh, you chose Steadicam? I chose Steadicam just cause I wanted it to look like a movie. But initially, the shots were to kind of go slower, just so it would be you know, easier for Kavika. But I mean, at one point, it was just, <laughs> I let Devin, no, who was the uh, Steadicam op, just just do his thing. I think I'd mentioned at one point, like the movement from behind the frame into the front of the frame is gonna be really difficult. So like he kept it to a minimum, mm. but there are some, but I'm kind of glad that oh, you I did. I love that shot. Yeah, yeah, th that's, that's one so of my favorite cool. shots. Is this the moment where you're wrapping around the yeah, picture? Yeah, it goes around behind. Yeah. And you, yeah. yeah, so sick. So, but it, it came out. Good. So moving into production, you said that you wanted to be like a Victorian style house before, and then you kind of found this new space. So how did you go about finding this space? So basically I just, I went on pier space. I needed something that was long, like a hallway. Cause the original idea was to create like an, an infinity hallway. So it just keeps going and going and going. Found this bunker, this above ground bunker right in LA. 
scouted it. It was perfect. They had beams already ready to go, hang the frames from it, and it just looked perfect. Mm. And then I figured with VFX, we could extend it to make it seem like an infinity hallway. I'm interested to know like what challenges you faced uh, when it came to shooting in that space because you have this like half dome bunker area right. um, and you're trying to shoot it cinematically. You had it on a steady cam. You were shooting most of your shots like some handheld? Uh, one handheld shot. One Everything handheld? else was steady cam. Wow. Yeah. So what were some of the challenges you guys faced utilizing that space? The challenges, I would say making sure that fishing wire held those frames up, <laughs> especially that final frame, which was pretty heavy. We shot this in a day. So it was like, that was another challenge just to get everything we needed and hustle. Mm. Um, other than that, I would say just to make sure Kavika had the right track points and all that stuff to, to be able to track the frames. Mm. Let's talk about the lighting. What was the coordination that you guys had there? I know you guys used Wasted Potential. Shout yep. out to Chad. Chad was on the podcast early, early on in the Black Window Cream days. Um, but what, what went into the lighting? I mean, it, it, there's all types of different movements. Some seem slow when it's slow motion. You have fast paced lighting. How did you guys choose that? So it was really just based off of the record itself. So when the energy picked up, we had maybe a strobing effect going on the panels on the side. And uh, when it slowed down, more of a fading in effect. But as far as the construction of it, the whole idea was just to create this perspective where you would look down and it would just just keep going. Yeah, I loved it. Smaller. I love seeing there was like a, a point in the video where the lights come up behind Cal and like it's perfectly timed with the yeah. music and everything like that, which takes some coordination. Yeah, that took a took a bunch of takes. But the whole idea was just to line it to make it look like longer than it actually was. Mm. And then for the performance shots, I forget what they're called. Uh, I think flares, big ass lights. Put them in the corners behind Cal and just had um, Griff, who was the the lighting op, just had him go to town and just to kind of do his thing to the music. And like the colors were very huey, you used a lot of like neon purples, yeah, blues, yeah. reds. What was the choice for that? We wanted to keep it blue, purple, kind of like sci-fi spacey at first, just to keep it mysterious, mm -hmm. I'd say. And then the color started to pick up. You know, we got some oranges involved, some yellows, because more color was now coming into Cal's life, Cal's mm -hmm. career. That was the whole like symbolism of it. It started static, the black and white, and then eventually it you know, came to color static. Right. In the shooting process, like what was some of the direction that you were giving Cal? I know this has got to be a big feat. It's Cal's first music video as a solo artist. He's been in a group for years. Right. Um, what was some of the direction you gave to him? How important was that for him to play this role? The direction was really like he killed it. So he knew exactly what he wanted to do, how he wanted to showcase himself coming out solo and his look. So he was in charge of wardrobe and all that stuff. But as far as directing him, it was really just I was there to hype him up during the performance shots, I would say. Because, you know, maybe at certain points he might he might have been in his head and I wanted more energy out of him, so I'd be in the background like looking like an idiot. <laughs> but uh, really just a hype man. Yeah. I was a hype man. And then as far as the actual like walking, it was just placement, um, you know, walk down the center, move, move over to your right, stop, look, uh, take a moment, smile, look at the picture. It's, it's you when you were younger, reminisce sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it was it was pretty straightforward. You had a VFX supervisor on set. So Kavika came to set to yes. uh, kind of coordinate and try to make sure that everything would work for you in post, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. right? How important is it for you to have a supervisor with you from pre-production to production? I, it's 100% necessary to have him on set because I don't want him to get the clips and just be like, why didn't you use, have a tracking point for me? You know, because I know a little bit of VFX, not a lot at all, but enough to know that you need tracking points mm -hmm. um so with him being there and kind of giving suggestions on certain things how to make it easier and all that it was it was huge so that's it for part one part two is going to be about all of the post-production we're going to talk about vfx how they work together on making this video come to life so make sure to check that out right after you watch this video you heard me